calms you. So what relaxes you? What centers you? What chills you? What just makes you feel like, like everything's gonna be okay? And it could be equally both. It could be nature. It could be reading. It could be music. It could be napping. It could be food. How about we all put in the chat what our favorite food is? Let's start to get hungry for dinner. Okay, so hugs. Oh my God, uh, hugs. They're one of my favorite TEDx talks is called How to Make Stress Your Friend. And it's all about the fact that we only, this is the silver lining of something like COVID, is that we reach out to people when we're in time of need. And that's actually evolutionary. That when things are good, we're less likely to reach out. And our body, and this is one of the courses I encourage you guys all to come to, that I teach on drugs and behavior, is that our body is its own pharmacy and everything that you've been putting in the chat overrides the negative side of stress. That when you get a really big hug, then what you do is you're creating what's called oxytocin, which is called the cuddle hormone. And it can make all the difference. So let's talk about, now we're talking about food. Yeah, because I told, <laughs> my husband helps me out before I give a talk. John, shout out to John. I said, whatever you want, just research it while you're quietly in another room today and I'll buy you whatever you want at four o'clock. So you guys are giving me some ideas. So yes, yeah, so we were talking about what relaxes us. And so uh, music, your, fia your fiance, music, Instagram, first time I went on it, hugs, sleeping food, ice cream, tacos, chicken shawarma, steak, flop. Let's see, we're getting hungry. I should actually have you put in there what you like. So all of those things are, this is it, okay? So this is why we're going to talk about now, which is the next form, is that I'm going to put a challenge out to Shabam and the team to put all of this into action. And there's a link to the article in here and I'm gonna go through each of these, but as a team to take these stress coping skills, which I will always consider practical everyday things that are within your reach. Go see a professional for therapy. Go see a professional for medical advice. Go see a professional for all those things. But at the end of the day, we have to self lead and then we need to connect as a team in a positive place. So in this 12 days of self-care, I'm gonna go through them. And each of these are every day, you could put on your wall at SRC, you could in your chat or your group and say, okay, day one, we're all gonna do this. Day two, we're all gonna do this. So I'm gonna read them off and I want you to put in the chat too, which of the ones you find most appealing. So, and then after this, we'll have, I'm gonna open it back up and we'll have a chat before the first break. So the first one is mindful mornings. So mindful mornings. And what mindful mornings, this was actually a suggestion. I'm always listening. When I gave a speech at Conestoga and it was on emotional intelligence and we were talking about how to implement, because by the way, stress has been around forever, like long before this. And one of the students leaders said that one of the best ways to do coping is to add it to an existing routine. Because so often, put your hand up if you're busy. Who's busy? Everyone's busy. But everybody takes the time to brush their teeth. Everybody takes the time to have their coffee or their shower. So this student leader suggested, if you add five minutes to every routine and take that as your downtime, so the first one's called mindful, uh, and you everybody has the slides, it's, it's on here, mindful mornings. And so that one, what you do is literally when you have that smoothie or your coffee, so that day one, say Shabam with your team, you would just put a chat out to everybody and say, I want you to share. And by the way, when you share such a thing, it's just relaxing for everybody. How did you add 10, 20 minutes to your morning to make it more present? So when you add 10 minutes to your smoothie, then you're, you're just like with it, like you're tasting it, it's whatever. So what my husband and I do, and I was interviewed for psychology today for this, is we have, we have spa coffee talk. And sometimes it's spa silence. 
And so that even if we have to get up at 5.30, we'll go to bed really early and we'll get up for 45 minutes. We light some incense, we put some Zen music on and we just have, because we're morning people at night, we have nothing, we're just too tired to really chat with each other. And so we just make it about the moment. The second one is soothing stretches. So I'd like everybody to stand up right now. Stand up. Okay, go to the side of the screen if you need to, depending on what you're wearing. Okay, or not wearing. So, <laughs> Everybody right now with me, okay? I just want you to stretch. And I want you to touch your toes. You can see I'm going to go if you want. Stretch back up. And wear fancy boots over here. <laughs> and then touch your feet again. And count to five. You can come back. So day two, good to see everybody, is that <laughs> we live in a world, <laughs> we live in a world that is so electrical, right? It's so full, filled with energy. And we don't spend a lot of time in our body. So day two is about showing your limbs some love. Day three is about lingering lunches. So most people don't give themselves time for lunch. So on day three, however you want to add it to your calendar and take this as you like as a team, then share pictures of yourself, just how you basically set up a nice little lunch for yourself. Then put your phone away and eat your food mindfully taste every single bite and give yourself the gift of lunch. So this article was called 12 days of self care because we have 12 days of Christmas. And so much of Christmas is focused on everybody but you. And unfortunately, if you're giving from a place that you have nothing to give, it leads to resentment. And that's not what you want to be doing. So Self-care doesn't have to take days, weeks, years, and it doesn't have to be expensive. So now we have enjoyed day one, call it a Monday that we start. You've added some extra time to your breakfast. Secondly, say the Tuesday throughout the day, no matter what, maybe set a little timer on your phone, you stretch it out. Like, so when you're stretching it out, Imagine that you're stretching and inviting in whatever the universe has for you. So I want everybody to put in the chat right now, what is the dream that you think or might, what is your future? What do you want? And stretch it out. So put your arms up like that with me right now. And Ryan and Sandy, you still have dreams too, okay? We're not dead, okay? <laughs> so right now, what, what are you stretching out for? What's that dream that somebody might think you're not? I want to wish I was right in there. So what is your dream? I, oh, I love it. I love it. I'm going to put my on. I'm going to put mine on. Okay, one day I will be on her show. <laughs> so what is your dream? Uh, uh, yeah, money. I, we're all for the money. There's nothing wrong with money. So I'm going to put California. I'm going to put Las Vegas. I'm going to put um, peace. <laughs> I love it. I'm not going to read these all off. I'm going to put, uh, yeah, so the virus ending, no more lockdowns, in person learning. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, I should. Maybe you'll be it. So, peace, virus ending, no more lockdowns, traveling. These are our dreams. We're stretching. We're stretching. We're stretching. And by the way, this is what makes you feel alive, that you have the possibility of something beyond there. So let me see, let me see. Oh, well, keep adding to it. The list can go on forever. You can have as many things as you want to reach up for. That's really important. So that when you're in, yes, so forget about normal. How about even better than normal? How about taking all the strengths that we have and the innovation, the creativity? And by the way, once again, because of this great resignation, the C is parting for you and opportunities for jobs in Canada. There's no doubt for that. Okay, yeah, making lifetime relationships. 
So that's where we're talking about movement as medicine. Day six is fresh air. So you're gonna have meetings. We're gonna have meetings outside. I don't care if it's minus 20. By the way, I'm a member of Frank's Mug Club in Tecumseh. <laughs> and, like, and what they're doing right now is that you reserve a heater on the patio and they have a cornhole game, which is like, right? So there's innovative ways. If you've been to Europe in the winter, they're outside all the time. So we're not gonna think small. We're gonna think big, which is really important. And then movement is medicine. That would be, I, I skipped that one, so that's day four. I can't imagine a better way to, to, to change the day. Silence. Can be hard. <laughs> so silence is another self-care. Taking time to read an actual book. So, yeah, explore as much as you can. So now, what's, what's a book you've been wanting to read, but you haven't had time to read? What would that book be? What would that book be? one of my favorite books, Steering by Starlight. I could like read it 10 different times. And in my TEDx talk, I talk about a North Star vision. And this is where I, well, North Stars talked about a lot, but this inspired me. So what are some of the books? Yeah, so uh, Percy Jackson, 1984, we're haunted by that. <laughs> Parenting for Dummies, love it. So these are, this is your reading time. This is, this is day seven. Every single thing I've suggested for stress management, it's free and it doesn't require anybody but you. And by the way, we have a fantastic library at the college. Like if you haven't met the staff personally at the college. So yeah, so we're talking at this point, we're on reading time. Uh, oh, okay. So, so a book, I love it. A book that you were a New Year's gift to yourself. Yes, I love that New Year's gift to yourself. So now we're gonna move into soothing scent. So how many of you consider the impact of smell on your ability to relax? One of the reasons, I love it. One of the reasons smell, this is, this is day nine, has such an impact on your ability to relax is we have five senses. So we have taste, we have touch, we have smell, we have vision, and what's the other one that I'm, I'm missing? I don't know what it is. Oh, you collect candles, I love it. And so that, that is a wonderful way for you to shift the atmosphere. And when we were kids, when we were really young, Sandy, think of this one. And my, when we were feeling, because there's that separation anxiety when you're about four or five, my mom used to spray her, her perfume on the inside of our turtleneck. And so when we were missing home, we would just smell the inside of our turtleneck. So that smell can so soothing sense, grounding yourself. So I, I alluded this, to this before. When you are feeling overwhelmed, lie on the ground. And the beautiful thing about lying on the ground is that you feel gravity. And when you really feel gravity, you realize how not alone you are in this world. That there are forces that are moving in your favor that you don't even think about. Like you can't be living on another planet. We'll talk aliens later. I'm sure they will, it will make it into this talk. But that we can live on this planet because we're held down by gravity. So that's a great way to get a different perspective. So before I ever get a speech, because yes, you see I'm very animated, enthusiastic, but I also need to be level and grounded. So that would be uh, in day 10, you could have like your meeting just lying on the ground, like anywhere. And it's, trust me, it's fun. Um, day 11, matinee movie. Let's hope the movie theaters open up again. Otherwise have a matinee movie at home, very important. And then finally, mirror affirmations. Write a note to yourself. Pick any kind of quote, and then you can take all these, these quotes, like a sticky note, and bring it back to your office, and what would you tell yourself? So, for example, I want everyone to put that in the chat right now. Oh, I, I'm going to lay on the ground in my office all the time now. Sandy, that's your homework. Yes, you are. When I come see you, because I, I said this, Shamar, I'm coming to see you after this, for sure. To sort of the wrap. <laughs> I'll look in the window, I'm like, where are they? They're on the ground. <laughs> See, there's always different ways. And then you look up the ceiling. 
So my last thing is, if, if you were to write, write a note on your mirror, what would it say? This, so that a lot of us don't, are, don't even tune into it. We're gonna get into this in the second part. But what are you telling yourself? So what love note would you write to yourself? It's called a mirror affirmation. You say it to the people around you. You say it on Instagram. You say it to your kids. What kind note would you leave for yourself at night on your mirror? And so that when you 